filter paper method is a relatively old method for measuring soil suction or water potential that's still pretty commonly used in geotechnical engineering. With this method, a piece of filter paper is sealed in a, an airtight container with some soil and the suctions of those two are allowed to equilibrate. So if the filter paper is in contact with the soil like this, then it equilibrates with the matrix suction of the soil. And if it is suspended above the soil, then the total soil suction uh, equilibrates between those two. Once the filter paper has equilibrated with the soil, then the filter paper is brought out and weighed wet dried out and then weighed dry to get the water content. Once you know the water content of the filter paper, you can infer the suction of that filter paper um, from a calibration curve, which is essentially the moisture characteristic curve of the filter paper. So this is a, an indirect method for measuring the soil suction. There are a couple of attractive aspects to the filter paper method. The first is that it's a very inexpensive technique. You really only have to buy some Wattman number 42 filter paper. You need to have an oven and you need to have some sealed containers. And if you have that, then you can make these measurements. The other attractive uh, point is that there is an ASTM standard, ASTM D5298, that describes the filter paper method, which is an important thing for a lot of uh, engineering applications. But maybe the most important benefit of the filter paper method is that it is able to measure soil suction all the way from saturation, so zero suction, all the way to air dry. So you can cover the entire range of soil suctions that you might encounter in nature with this method. So despite the positives of the filter paper method that we just talked about, there are some big problems that um, are often overlooked. If there is any temperature difference between the soil sample and the filter paper, that creates a really large error in the suction measurement. So an, a one degree temperature difference between the, the sample and the filter paper will give you an eight megapascal error in the suction measurement. And while you would never expect a one degree temperature difference, a tenth of a degree temperature difference or a hundredth of a degree temperature difference between the filter paper and the sample is quite possible and in fact quite likely because it's much more difficult than people understand to create truly isothermal conditions. To give you a, a better feel for how big this error can be, if you're at permanent wilting point, which is one and a half megapascals of suction or 4.2 PF, just a one-tenth of a degree temperature difference between your soil sample and the filter paper will give you a 55% error in your suction measurement. And this error increases as you go wetter or toward lower suction. So one and a half megapascals is a relatively dry soil. If you're measuring in moist soils, you need really temperature uh, agreement or temperature stability within about a thousandth of a degree to make a good measurement of, of soil suction with this method. The other big problem with the filter paper method is that the ASTM standard recommends a universal calibration for multiple types of filter paper and multiple lots of filter paper. And this has been shown to not be an effective way to get good measurements out of the filter paper method. There's been some work done that shows that different batches or different lots of even the same type of filter paper don't have the same calibration curve. So. Um, uh, Bill Lykos and Ning Lu wrote a paper that was published a while back that looked at the differences in calibration among seven different batches of the same filter paper. So they used seven different lots of Wattman number 42 filter paper. And what they found was that they needed a individual calibration for each one of those lots to get any kind of reasonable accuracy. If they applied a universal calibration to all those different lots of filter paper, they ended up with a 25 to 50 percent error encompassed by the 95 percent confidence interval. So the bottom line is that even if you have perfectly isothermal conditions, which are almost impossible to achieve in practice, you may still get a 25 to 50 percent error in your suction measurements with the filter paper technique. So in the end, you're probably better off using a modern method that's going to be a lot more accurate and actually turns out to be a lot simpler in the end.